So recently I was home for my birthday and I was talking to my father um, about where I was traveling over the next few weeks. Usually I'm saying Charleston, Rhode Island, et cetera. And I said, Houston, I'm going down to speak on social media in facilities. He said, social media in facilities, that's not what you do. Sure, Dad, but I'm a millennial, so like I'm qualified to talk about this stuff. <laughs> so that led to us talking about the cloud. And we have not talked in a month because that was a tough conversation to have. So today I hope that when we talk about social maintenance um, and what I'm calling social media and social maintenance, um, we can take the stigma away from it being something that the baby boomer generation or facilities folks shouldn't be participating in and aren't qualified to because it couldn't be more the opposite. And I hope that having Dave and Mark here today will um, prove that point even further because they are doing amazing things on both of their campuses as it pertains to social media use. I'll have Dave and Mark further introduce themselves um, during their sections, but as I mentioned, my name is Caroline Johnson. I'm a service manager with Sightlines based out of Guilford, Connecticut. Um, so Sightlines does not do social media, so my boss was really nice to let me come and sort of do my what if for the day. Um, so with that being said, I am gonna just plug us a little bit here so I can check that off and make sure that I still have a job when I get back. Um, but most of you in the room may have heard of Sightlines. We're a facilities asset advisory firm, um, primarily working in higher ed and a, a few familiar faces over the last few days who we work with, so I was excited to catch up with some of you. Our primary service is our facilities benchmark and analysis service, otherwise are formally called ROPA, Return on Physical Assets, where we're exploring an institution's physical components, so your building space, your capital investment, what level of investment do you have, and are you meeting the designated targets that Sightline sets for you? If not, that lovely word of deferred maintenance often pops up. If we have a high deferred maintenance, we'll often say a facilities condition assessment would be a wise decision, and that's where you utilize our facilities assessment and planning solution, where we go the route of a standard FCA, but then involve your staff and make sure that they are contributing to those project lists and helping set the priority of the needs across your campuses. Space utilization was a very big topic over the last few days. So looking at room occupancy, then working with your registrar office, look at scheduling and seeing if we can't help better that process and bring those two sides of the house together um, and avoid building new if we can. And lastly, sustainability solutions. So I thought the UC presentation earlier was, was really interesting. So looking at your greenhouse gas inventory and how you compare to peer institutions across the higher ed industry and then also helping with your STARS reporting. So with that being said, we're not gonna talk about any of that today. Moving on. <laughs> we are gonna talk about social media. And I was told yesterday at cocktail hour to talk really slow during that introduction of social media, but I'm gonna give you guys the benefit of the doubt and um, assume that <laughs> some of you are on social media. So just by show of hands, personal, Facebook, Twitter, Instagrams, Brilliant, look at that, we can stop right here. Um, and how about with your facilities teams? Are you utilizing social media? Great, so we wanna also hear from you and, and learn best practices from you as well, so please feel free to interrupt and we'll also leave um, plenty of time at the end. Then I'm gonna share some videos of current students, one from a large public institution and one from a small private institution. Both those schools aren't here and I'm so thankful for that. Um, <laughs> And then I'm gonna hand it over for the real show where Dave will start talking about the University of Tennessee and how they've established themselves as social media influencers and leaders across the higher ed facilities um, sector. And then Mark's gonna um, speak to more recent application of social media at the University of Florida. So jam-packed, but we're gonna have some fun. All right. So one area that I did wanna bring in from our uh, facilities benchmarking analysis is our customer satisfaction survey, which oftentimes is an overlooked part of our analysis, but for today I think it's actually really relevant. So what you're seeing here is a sample of a handful of institutions survey data where we ask them to assess their satisfaction with the work order process at your institution. So we're surveying students, faculty, staff, and facilities teams. 
What you'll see here in red are the two areas that always score the lowest, and that's communication and feedback. When we put that as an aggregate across all your departments, again, feedback stands out as the one area across campus that people are saying, they're just not good at it. We want more feedback, and not, hi, I've received your work order, we'll get back to you, or hi, your parts are in, I saw that we'll get that to you. They wanna know what you did, how you did it, and build a relationship and a rapport with you. Social media is one way in what you can do that among many. So what is social media? Here's a fake text that Dave sent me. And he said, Caroline, what is social media? So social media is um, applications that are web-based where we are interacting with family, friends, colleagues, et cetera, through a network where we're sharing ideas, opinions. My life right now, it's a lot of baby pictures and weddings. Um, and, and really a way for us to interact and share with one another. The four that we're going to explore most today is Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and this new beast called Snapchat. A little more on those. I'm gonna go through these very quickly. Facebook uh, has been in the news a little bit recently. You might have seen them having some round table talks with Congress last week. Um, but Facebook is really the original social network um, application where people are able to share everything they want with no limitations. The target audience for Facebook is 18-year-olds to 49-year-olds. So talk about the sweet spot of the demographics across your college campuses. Moving to Instagram, this one's growing like rapid fire. Set of Facebook where you're able to share dialogue and pictures, Instagram is completely a photo and video sharing application. This is very popular with users under the age of 35. Twitter, take that status application from Facebook and that's Twitter. So you're sharing 140, actually they just upped that a little bit, but 140 characters. Um, so news, information, et cetera, quick um, bursts of information. And lastly, Snapchat. So Snapchat is huge among um, the centennials, so the ages 13 to 34. Um, my two-year-old niece can use Snapchat, so just wait for that generation. Um, <laughs> and we're going to talk a, a little bit about Snapchat, but we're still catching up with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter in higher ed. So Snapchat, I think, is still something that we'll, we'll sort through and, and figure out where that fits within our model. All right, so this is a Bitmoji. Uh, that's me as a Bitmoji. I think that they're hilarious, and I use them often, and I would imagine that folks across your college campuses do too. So she's going to help us throughout this presentation. Um, the messaging here is, like it or not, your students are talking to you, at you, and about you. So the benefit of having social media is, is huge, but the risk of not having a social media presence is greater. Because we're having interactions like this, and this is a, a, a little small on the screen, so I'll walk you through this. This is Mark. He's from Young American, and he put a work order in. He followed the rules, and he feels that facilities, and I didn't, validate this or not. He feels that facilities didn't respond to his work order. And so his roof caved in. And so he put it on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And I didn't show, I, I cut it off, but he had over 50 retweets. So now 50 of his friends have seen what's happening at his institution. Then we have Emily. Emily at least realizes that she's passive aggressive and admits it and she's making light of it, but she still went to Twitter to share her frustration with facilities. And lastly, we have Rowan University, and this is Iced Tay, which is an interesting name. Um, she's saying, my water is so hot that it's physically burning me when I shower, and she's angry because she's writing in all caps locks. And Rowan University um, basically intercepts this tweet and says, hey Taylor, and they're being kind and patient, have you tried submitting a work order? And they give her that link. This is a really great interaction among many negative ones. What, only, what could have made this better is if the facility specific handle had received this tweet and addressed it right away. Because now Rowan University is creating the priority for the facilities team. And that can, get sh that can be challenging. You also see um, at times, and maybe some of your own institutions have your president might be active on Twitter. Um, someone made a joke that our president is very active on Twitter, um, but as are some of your institution presidents, 
And there also, I've seen many instances where they're responding to students saying, we're going to send a team over right now. And that has to be challenging as well. So before you um, pull out your phones, which, hey, go for it, it's the topic, um, and search work order in your institution names, just kind of like jack yourself up because it's, it's a tough world out there on social media. There's a lot of um, warriors on, on the key keyboards, so just be careful there. Um, but I would encourage that. Put a handout on the tables just so that it'll be a bit easier to see, but earlier today we had, um, with Nebraska, this came up too. But most students decide if, if the college they are looking at will stay on their list within 10 minutes of walking on campus. 10 minutes. That's the parking lot, basically. So furthermore, it used to be they would keep that to themselves. Now they're out tweeting, Facebooking, live Facebooking to all of their friends, who then are saying, well, Joe didn't like it, so I'm not even going to go to that campus. So we have to be on social media helping to facilitate and take those interactions and hopefully turn them into a positive interaction. So I'm going to narrow this down to the top three benefits, and I'm almost done talking here. The first is um, having a social media presence allows your facilities teams to strengthen your organization's relationships with your customers. So you're able to actually go in and communicate with them, and I think that you're going to hear from Dave and Mark that that's really a true statement. Um, they've really established themselves as a partner and have come out from behind the scenes on their campuses uh, as a friend to some of these students, faculty, and staff, which I think is really helpful. Second, it allows for real-time communication. So while you might be receiving a tweet or an Instagram post or a Snapchat later than you would have liked, you're still getting that communication where what I'm hearing now is they're not going, students are not going to go to your work order system. They're just not. And that's a challenge, and we're going to talk later and answer the question, is social media the new work order system? And what the implication of that is for our teams. And lastly, it's the proactive management of dissatisfied customers. So you saw some of those earlier tweets. Those were negative, but we have the power to hopefully turn those into positive interactions by responding to those students, faculty, and staff. But don't take it from me. Let's meet Jack and let's meet Olivia. Jack is a junior at the University of Oregon. And he's a broadcasting major. He's also my cousin, which afterwards I will maybe take that back. And then we have <laughs> Olivia over here, who's just the sweetest, um, sophomore at Point Park University in Pittsburgh. And she's a dance major. So we have two different institutions here, two different types of people. Um, and before I hop into to Jack, I'll just tell you a real quick story to add some context. So last summer, Jack lived with, with me. Um, he's from Oregon, came over to Connecticut. Um, he had an internship with the baseball team up in Norwich, Connecticut. So I said, sure, I'll be a host parent for the summer, no problem. Whew, that was a tough summer. Um, <laughs> so I, I told Jack, I said, you can live here free. I get it, you're in college. I was broke in college. I absolutely get it but you're going to mow the lawn. You're going to do all of my lawn maintenance, and you're going to do your own laundry. So I come home day one of Jack having his lawn mowing responsibility, and I see the, the mowing marks, but the lawn's not mowed. And I'm like, OK, what's going on here? I grew up on a hay farm, so I grew up growing, driving tractors. So I come in, and I'm like, Jack, I thought you were going to mow the lawn. He said, I did. And I said, Jack, come on outside. So I showed him. He never lowered the blades. <laughs> <laughs> So let's meet Jack. All right, here I am, Jack Taylor from the University of Oregon in my dormitory, looking at what seems to be a leak in my roof, and I've been posting on my Snapchat story for hours with complaining. I mean, look at this. The cup is almost full, halfway, with dripping water, and I can't get a hold of facilities for the life of me. I've called six times, no one's answered. I walked to their office, no one was there. I just wish that they would see my Snapchats. I mean, is it too much to ask for these old timers to hop on social media to better convenient the students that are paying so much to go here? I mean, a leaky roof, that seems like something I deal with when I've built my own house and now owned it for 30 years and I'm going to patch that stuff up with some duct tape. But not at this university that they constantly raise rates, I mean, to, to better their facilities. This should be easy stuff. And I mean, facilities, university, if you're out there listening, we're waiting. It's your move. <laughs> 
he probably should have been a drama major, but. <laughs> so that's Jack, and we'll, we'll end this with Olivia. Over the last two years, I've submitted a bunch of work orders and I've never heard back. I wish I could just tweet it, get a fast response, and it would be so much more efficient. I have a crazy schedule with school, dance, rehearsals, and it would just be easier if they could get back to me as soon as possible. All right, so a little exaggerated, I kind of led them into some of these questions, but um, I mentioned I've, I've been in Twitter for the last six months with um, Mark and Dave and working with them, and those are real sentiments. They really are, maybe not as, as dramatic as Jack quite was, but those types of feelings um, about facilities and their interactions are out there, and we have the power to take those tweets and turn them into a positive message. So now I'm going to hand this over to Dave, who will introduce himself and the work that University of Tennessee Knoxville has been doing um, with social media. Dave? Thank you. Um, well, first, uh, a quick incident that happened just before this. I got a tweet on my UT account from a student who, of course, didn't know I was here, was complaining about something on campus. and. Uh, I've answered her in the past, um, and I was able to send it to one of our folks out in the field who was carrying a, uh, a tablet, <clears throat> and it's already been solved, and we've already been able to get back to her, um, which obviously she was really excited about. So if anybody thinks that it's not something our students appreciate and do, that's a, an example literally five minutes ago. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to see some some hands from some of you that are, are using social media. When we started talking about this five years ago and did it right after I got to the University of Tennessee, there weren't a lot of colleagues who were doing it. <clears throat> and this response was sort of usually, we can't afford it, uh, we don't have enough people to do the things that we need to do normally. Um, you know, It's a great thing to do, but that's really not what we're about. And, and we have a website and we send, you know, we send out other ways of communicating. And I guess what I would suggest is that um, you can't afford not to do it. And there are ways, and we'll talk about that later, there are ways to get into this very, very inexpensively with students. And that's actually how we started. We had a person on our staff who had started with us as a student. She did some other things. Turned out when I got there and interviewed all the folks to say, what's your dreams, what do you do? She was a communications major. And what she really wanted to do was, was to do that kind of thing. And so that's how we got started on it. Um, we now have a fairly robust team. So we actually have uh, now three FTEs and a whole bunch of students. We have 12 students that do nothing but social media for us. The FTEs, I should quickly add, are on all of communications. So we have one that just does social media, but we also have a very robust website. We do lots of press releases. We work with our uh, university communications folks on that sort of thing. Um, we're on six social media platforms all together, and what we found is that you really need to be on more than one platform, and I, you know, that sounds like, ugh, but you can use a lot of the same content on each one, but they each have slightly different um, audiences, if you will. So email is great if you're going to do official things, but if you really want to get to faculty and staff, Facebook is great for staff, particularly um, uh, Gen Xers, uh, baby boomers, Facebook is terrific for that. Facebook is not how you reach students. Twitter is how you reach students, and increasingly Twitter doesn't even reach students. It's um, Snapchat and Instagram. And in fact, we had a, a social media event earlier this month where we, uh, we did some things with social media to increase awareness of facilities, and the way that they could uh, register for uh, prizes was if they gave us their Facebook, um, or excuse me, if they gave us their Twitter handle, and um, so and became followers of us. Well, we found out as we went through, and we had to change that very quickly because our freshmen didn't have Twitter handles. They're not on Twitter. They're on Instagram. They're on Snapchat. So, so you really need to be aware of those kinds of things. But you can use all of that as a as a total um, communication strategy, and I guess that's one of the things we'd want to say. This is not the silver bullet, but it is something you really need to have in your arsenal. It's part of a total branding strategy and a total strategy of how do you serve the mission of your university, and how do you communicate that. Um, you know, way back in the dark ages, you know, the dinosaurs like I were, was we were, my, my mentor told me, 
facilities is best if nobody knows we're there. Because that means we haven't made any mistakes. You know, you're like the referee. Nobody should see you. If you're doing everything right, you're OK. That is not the case anymore. And if you think about what you do in your private life, whether it's Amazon or any company, you're expecting to have that regular kind of contact. And you expect that you're going to be notified of all those kind of things. You're going to get that push notification, whether it's on those websites or, more importantly, on social media. And that's what folks are coming to the campus, uh, whether they're students or faculty or staff, that's what they expect, too. So you need to do those same kind of things. And if you're not doing them, then you're not really serving them in the 21st century. Um, so we do all those kind of things. So one, I'll admit one of the things that we're not doing well and we need to improve on it. So if you, I'm interested if any of you are doing it, is that link between how do we take that social media input and get it into our work order system. We don't have a way to automatically do that. We do it, um, but we actually have to have a person pull that down and, and do it. So that's one, if anybody's figured out a way to do that interface a little more effectively, I'd appreciate that. Um, but Again, we're, we're doing a lot of those kind of things, um, and, and uh, it's been very effective. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use what your campus is doing, because I guarantee you your campus is on all of these. Athletics is on all of these. Your chancellor is definitely on all of these. Our chancellor actually has a master's degree in, and a doctorate in communication, and with an emphasis on social media, so you can guarantee that she's on all of these. Um, so it's really sort of a self-preservation strategy. You can go to the next slide. Um, again, it's all part of a total um, package. So a lot of our, our social media tweets are just directing them to information. We do a lot of things in terms of answering questions and, and, and getting feedback and, and, and answering their problems. But we also do a lot of things just to direct them out to uh, information on projects, information on our website, things that we want them to know. We found that's a very effective way to do it. Next slide. So these are just a few of those. These are actually tweets off of, uh, um, <clears throat> off of our website and off of our Facebook. We actually have uh, two Twitter um, pages. We have one for our department. We've had that for, like I said, five years. We actually have now one with me. And I was, I'm a dinosaur, so I was kind of reluctant to do that. But I found that, that uh, they need a face. Uh, and they couldn't find a good-looking face, so they used me instead. Um, but, and, and I really was wondering whether that was effective or not until this fall we were doing a, what we call walk in the dark, which is a security walk that most campuses do. And, um, and I was twi tweeting as we went along. And one of the st students uh, was with me and I was talking to her, it was a student body president, and I asked her um, what she knew about us. And she said, oh, I know all about you. I follow you on Twitter. And I said, you mean you follow our department? No, I follow you. I just saw that you tweeted. Um, so again, it's a very, really effective way of, of getting out there and putting a face on facilities. Um, we use it as a way to engage with our campus, engage with our folks. Um, and we found um, that in terms of construction updates, it's really great because we can do real live, real time sorts of things. So if a contractor is parked somewhere where they weren't supposed to be, which is a tweet I got yesterday, we can correct that in real time. Um, we can uh, have our alumni who are also following us on social media, our students, we can do tours, we do videos that take them through our projects, we post rendering. So as soon as we start having a project, we start tweeting about it, we start doing social media about it, um, when they're in the design meetings, when we first have those initial sketches. And I know there's, initially there was some reluctance on the part of our architects and a part of our project managers, you know, why would we give that information out? It's sort of precious that we need to hold. Um, I'll tag team on my colleague from Nebraska. It's a way to tell our story. And again, they don't buy into buildings, but they buy into the story. And that's what we can do with social media. And we've been able to raise a huge amount of money. We have over a billion dollars in construction going on right now. Only 20% of that is state or federal funded. Most of that is private dollars. It's not just because of what we're doing on social media, but it's part of the total package of what we do. Next slide. And then something that we've also really done, which our, fa which our um, employees really love, you know, we've always done the sort of employee of the month and all those kind of things. I know everybody does those kind of things. Um, and, and those are 
effective and we have the plaque on the wall and we do all those kinds of things. But what we found that people really love is when we put them on social media. And so I've made it a point to make sure that when somebody does something, maybe a small sort of thing, they stayed over for an extra hour to do a project. We had a flood and they took care of it. Um, we put that on social media. And that really has more impact in terms of our staff, in terms of their being excited and them wanting to be part of our team because their colleagues see it, the people across campus see it and talk to them about it, their friends and family see it, they can point to it. So that's, for us, has turned out to be even more impactful than some of the traditional kind of rewards that we do um, and that we've done for, for decades. And then, obviously, it goes without saying, it's a communications tool, part of our total strategy of how do we make sure that people understand facilities, that we're not just in the room, but we're leading that room in terms of where we want to go and what we need to do from the facility standpoint. Um, a couple of quotes, I won't read them to you, you can read them. <clears throat> These are actual quotes from some of our folks. When we came about almost seven years ago now to UT, um, there were actually nine different facilities groups. A lot of colleges had their own facilities groups because we were not doing a good job. We had great people, we weren't putting them in the right place. We did a terrible job of telling folks about what we did. We used social media as a way along with reorganization and all of the other things to completely change what facilities is about. And these are a couple of quotes that point to that. We also sort of on the, um, on the one side of the screen, we did uh, a couple of weeks ago a thing called Torchbearer Tuesday, which was a way for us to, uh, we literally sat, set up in the middle of campus. We gave away food. That's always a great way to get students and faculty, right? Um, so we gave away food, we gave away prizes, and we started tweeting about that and putting it on Facebook the day before, and then we did it as the event was going on. We had a ton of interaction. We got a lot of questions about why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that, we could answer those. We got some great in input into some projects that we were going on, that were going on. It was really a great way for us to tell uh, people about facilities, and most importantly, our chancellor <laughs> got involved in that conversation as well. So it was able to tell the story at the high end. Um, just one more quick thing to kind of tell you the impact and really kind of crystallize why you need to do this. Because it's not just about communicating, it really is self-preservation. And some of you may know the University of Tennessee and Tennessee as a state uh, for the last three years has been looking at outsourcing. And they had a proposal that would have outsourced all of facilities for every state institution, um, higher ed, prisons, um, state parks, state highways, everything to one company. <clears throat> Very controversial, lots of discussion. Um, and we won't get into the pros and cons of outsourcing, but the proposal really didn't make sense for our campus. And what was really rewarding was, because we were engaged with our campus in such a dramatic way, using social media, students started organizing and students and faculty through social media organized protests. We had up to 10,000 people marching against it at one point. Um, and they were effective in organizing politicians against outsourcing, which saved a tremendous number of jobs. It was great for our campus, obviously fantastic for our staff and for our team. And so now, if they didn't before, they understand why this is an important part of what we do. All right, now we're going to hand it over to Mark, who is just about a year into social media at University of Florida. So, so the first time I brought up social media in front of a group of my peers was at a Southeastern Conference Chief Facilities Officer meeting. And so I said, hey, how, raise my hand, how many of you guys are working in social media? Well, there was one, one hand at the table, uh, but unfortunately, it was, it was so poorly received that I think not only no, but hell no, I heard from a yes. couple of guys, is they yeah. wouldn't have that. So I'm Mark Helms. I'm with the University of Florida. I'm over the facility services side. Had a career at Virginia Tech up in southwestern Virginia, and we did participate in social media because we had a very social media savvy president who played basketball on Wednesday afternoons and everybody Snapchatted and talked about it. So when I came to Florida, 
Florida president, uh, Dr. Fox, was very active with social media, but we did nothing. We had chosen not to do anything with that. And so as I went through the team trying to look, we really couldn't find the right person. We really needed to rebrand. We were still called physical plant division. So everything we did was mu very much in that 70s model of hiding behind the scenes. We were very good at taking responsibility when we messed up, as many of your folks are. We absolutely took no recognition when we did something correctly. So as you can see, fall of 2017, we got involved. We're at about 487 followers and growing. Uh, Twitter has been um, an interesting bring up because I hired a group on campus through the College of Journalism to help us rebrand and look at this new website, all this social media that was happening. I got on social media because my kids were on social media and I wanted to know what they were doing in college. Some of it I wanted to know, some of it I didn't. <laughs> but but that's, that became the way we communicated. My daughter was a communications major and had 19,000 followers on a fitness Instagram that she had. So, so I saw every day what she was doing, so, and I understood it. So this is just, this is just an outline of what we've done. Uh, again, it brings up uh, the, the, the agency, which was an on-campus group that helped us rebrand help us stand up Twitter, help us stand up Facebook, and help us stand up Instagram. We now have a student who is doing it, and we have a couple of folks who were current employees who have now taken an interest. So I've not spent a lot. Uh, I've spent some, uh, but I really feel like it's an investment in my, in my program. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna harm me from the financial loss. The other thing that we're doing, and we're working with the registrar's office now, we hope to put a Twitter, our Twitter account in classrooms instead of a phone number or an email address that they can send uh, information to. They'll sit in a classroom and tweet that they're too hot, but when the class is over, they forget that. So we're looking for ways to interact with them. My best success uh, story early on with this was during when Matthew came through and did all of its, wreaked all of its havoc in, uh, uh, in the state of Florida. I was sitting in an EOC with the Dean of Students and her first thought when the University of Florida says we're going to be closed for three days is what am I going to do with the 10,000 students who are on campus with us? We have to find a way to occupy them. I said, well, you know, they could always come help us clean up, right? We began tweeting back and forth. We had 450 kids come out and help us clean up around campus. 450 extra hands is a lot. Some of them had more fun than others. We gave away a t-shirt, a very cheap giveaway, we had them gloves and we had them stuff and they helped us get stuff to the street where the guys with equipment could pick it up. Go to the next slide. Part of that rebranding campaign. How many of you have taken to your written media or any other media that's available to you on campus? So the bottom left is a full page ad that ran in the alligator on the first home football weekend. We also did the radio station on campus, the, the public radio station on campus. I think if you check into those, the prices are very reasonable. I had lots of people saying, deans, department heads, other folks across campus. I heard your ad on, on the radio this morning. That, that rebranding, that's really, that's really neat. I like that. Go ahead. When Dave got up here, it said 45 minutes on the clock. When I got up, it said 15. I don't know what, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> you know. Uh, again, just some representative pages of our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, bottom right-hand corner, how many of you understand what Snapchat story is? Anybody know? We have one. Right. Wow, it's crazy what you can see on Snapchat story on, on Saturday night, Friday night. Uh, roofs that we now know they've been on and we've taken precautions to keep them off of. Uh, they love it. The ring wall around our O'Connell Center, which is our basketball arena, is a, a frequent place for photographs. So we've taken some, because we now understand how they're getting on the roof, <laughs> we, we, have taken, we have taken steps to stop that. And the bottom right is just a sprinkler head that's, that's been blown off. And so, you know, I get, while what they say on, isn't necessarily complimentary to us in many cases, uh, we know where the problem is and that was fixed the next morning. Next slide. Again, I talked about the agency. It's an on camp for us. It was an on-campus group through the through the business of uh, through the School of Journalism. I originally went to the business department. I said, "Here's what I want to do. I want to change the name. I want to change our look. I want to bring us to the forefront." And he said, I, I, "We can't do that for you." 
but, but the agency can, and they've been a great partner for us. Uh, on the right, that was just this week, or last week, Happy Wednesday. So they start taking pictures of flowers, and this has now prompted a Friday flower day. Who's going to send us a picture of the flower that you see today? Next. Again, talking about Hurricane Irma and the kids that came out, lots of, lots of good PR from that. All of the fraternities and sororities jumped on it. Sororities were harder workers than the fraternities, but we won't go into that. Uh, the fraternities kept wandering off, but that's okay. That's every, it, it still was a great amount of help. A great amount of help. Go to the next. And this, we're going to turn it back over to Caroline to, to let her finish up for us here. But, but this has been a, a really interesting undertaking. Don't, don't, because you don't use social media every day, there's somebody in your plant that does. It's not a huge uh, burden financially. I don't think you would say that either. I think it will far outweigh the, the expense. Uh, give it some consideration. I think it's a great way to begin to humanize yourself and what you do with the students, faculty, and staff on campus. Thank you. To, to wrap this session up and we'll have some time for questions or to hear um, from you folks on what's going well in, in your social media usage. Um, wrapping up some of the tips that Dave and Mark mentioned for you. First, um, before you begin, absolutely create a social media marketing plan before you begin. So that can be as simple as what platforms are we going to use, who's going to manage it, how many posts per day or per, per week or per month are we going to um, send out and who's going to be the responsible party to receive those tweets, Facebooks, or Instagrams. Um, managing the frequency of posts, so there are systems that allow you to automate when those are done, so you don't need one person who every day at noon is going to send out a post. You can actually front load your posts, so create all of them on a Monday morning, and then that will trigger off posts throughout the week giving the illusion that you're more active on social media than you really are, and therefore saving um, resources. Uh, so responsiveness, so it, it's worse if you hop on social media and then don't interact with it. So absolutely make sure that it becomes a, a two-way conversation. Um, and with this, I, I've heard institutions who have three or four people who manage, so depending on what shift they're covering, it could be your HVAC tech, it could be someone in the front office. Um, that really depends on what your strategy and your goal is, um, but making sure that someone's always there to have that two-way conversation. Monitoring those social media pages. Mm. So Mark mentioned that there's some scary stuff out there, so just making sure that we're retweeting the right things, um, making sure that if someone gives you a complimentary tweet, that you then go look at their profile and make sure the last four tweets they made were appropriate. Um, we see some of that happen, so just really doing your due diligence there, um, because as, as beneficial as this can be, it can also set you back a few steps as well. Um, but mostly your reply is your PR. So just making sure that we are being patient with our responses, um, even when the folks who are sending us a tweet um, might be less than. And then offering a variety of interactions. So your, your alumni and your parents want to know what's happening. Um, so news and updates would be appropriate for that type of group where questions and polls might be great for your staff and faculty. I saw um, Iowa recently, I believe, uh, put out a poll. What polo do you prefer? And then the team voted on it, and that was the polo that I imagine they ultimately purchased. It's a great way to involve your staff um, in, in dialogue as well. And then for students, uh, not so long ago, I was one of them. Competitions, free food, swag, all that stuff is absolutely welcome. So those are good ways to engage with your students and then throw your Twitter handle um, on that, um, those giveaways. I would say um, you can start this really easily and really cheaply. Um, it doesn't take full-time FTEs. No. Um, you know, all of you have an English department. Many of you have communications departments. If you, ask, if you talk to the folks in English and ask what are their graduates going to do, many of them are going to be doing this kind of thing when they leave. That's, they're going to be communications folks. They're going to be writing um, press releases or social media releases. Um, you can do internships, you can do a student, um, um, you know, student job, so, so you can start this really, really inexpensively and they would love to have that kind of uh, experience to put on their resume. 
Um, and then you can build from there if, after you've made a case for it. And that's really what we did. We, we have a pretty robust team now, but it really started very, very basically. So um, don't think you have to dedicate an FTE if you're a small university and that, or a resource challenge like we all are, and you don't want to make that commitment up front. There are ways to grow into this really, really inexpensively, particularly if you tag team with your folks on the academic side. Someone had a video up here that they said one of their housekeepers put together. Did that resonate with anybody here? So, so, so he, he obviously has some talent internal to his staff. And what an opportunity for that housekeeper to, to go from a housekeeper to this level of position in this business. We had a professor that came back and, and he, he sent out a tweet uh, about his office that was damaged during Hurricane Matthew. We were horrible people. We hadn't taken care of it. Uh, there was mold in his room. It was crazy. Actually, CNN even picked up on that Twitter from that professor. Um, and so we reacted very quickly because we didn't know anything was wrong in his office. Uh, come to find out, he hadn't been on campus for 90 days. Uh, the damage in his office had been caused by something in his office, but the tweet was out there. So we did some, we did some cleanup and some recon behind it, uh, but, but, but you're, gonna, you're gonna learn things about yourself, about your people, you know, you're going to see trucks parked places you're not very happy about, but, but that's all part of the growing. That's all part of learning. If that truck's parked the wrong in the wrong place and you're not happy about it, that's, that's manpower that you're losing. And we're all looking for ways to do more with less. Well, you know, if they're at the 7-Eleven, they're not giving you much more, right? So it's been a great eye in the sky for us. So we'll open it up. We have about two minutes for any questions or comments. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the, uh, I'm Heidi Davis from the University of Missouri. In mm -hmm. the example that you gave regarding uh, the professor who hadn't been on campus for 90 days and it was something in their office, um, a lot of times the tweets are not accurate. So how do you deal with getting the accurate story back out without looking like you're blaming? We just, we just responded. We, we actually said, thanks for letting us know there was a problem. We've now taken care of it. Here's how we've addressed it. Here's when it'll be complete. Didn't take the tweet back from CNN, nor was CNN interested in, in saying that, oh, hey, still, you know, it, it, was, it was fake news then, right? Yeah. So, so um, we just try to respond um, as positively as we can. They're, they're gonna, it's going to happen. It's 25 million square foot campus. Yeah, Things absolutely. like that are going to happen. But so. in terms of are either of you doing anything to inform then after the fact if, if there is some way to make this a loop instead of just a reaction? We actually met with him one-on-one, -on -one, so, so I'm sure there is. In that case, the best thing for us to do was to make our positive, res our apology response. And here, you know, at the end of the day, it didn't matter who was right or wrong. We needed to get it fixed, and we did. And so that's, that's really how we chose to address it. Uh, Mike Brady with Old Dominion. So how do you handle the training of your personnel, that HVAC tech, who's going to provide a response, that it's a proper response and not a, <laughs> maybe what they want to say? Well, that's, that's a question all, you know, in terms of communication in yeah. total, right? Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're your frontline folks. They're going to be responding in person or in email. Um, but the in-person isn't seen by 10,000 people or yeah, you know, great that's point. one person. Um, in terms of what we what we put on social media, uh, we typically what we do is it's usually not the frontline folks. We we um, right now anyway, you've got to be a, a manager or above in order to, to be on our social media platform and, and be engaging back and forth. And we've actually done training with our um, with our managers, not just about social media, but uh, but about how to communicate in general. Um, we talk a lot about the university mission, so they understand that, they understand how we fit into it, so all of their, if we're lucky, all of their interaction talks about that. Um, so we've, that, we've approached it as a broader sort of, here's how we communicate our story, and social media is just a part of it, but we limit who can, do, who can be on social media for us. And in many cases, it's probably gonna end up being the folks that are answering the phone for you already in a work management center or a call center uh, it, it seems to always funnel itself to there, or in my case, in both cases, it's done that. 
Um, uh, and so, so they're already communicating with the public. Uh, for us, when the students began putting together scheduled releases, we decided we were going to three times a week. Uh, and, and all of those, all the photos and all the words, all the documentation for that, we actually approved prior to them releasing it. I mean, if a student walks into a mechanical room and thinks it's an interesting picture, they take a photograph. They aren't thinking about um, things that an employee might be doing that they shouldn't be. Uh, again, you gotta be careful with that and watch. They came back with a great picture, but there was an employee standing on the top rung of a ladder, and that's all you could see was his, was his shoes on the top of the ladder and to his knees. And they were really excited about posting that, but, but we didn't. Also gave us an opportunity to go to the mechanic who was in the picture and say, hey, what, what you know. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think we're, we're out of time, but we're gonna be yeah. around for a little while. Oh, we'll talk to you. We, we can get one, one more. more. Yeah. Sure. One more question. We, we had his hand up for a while. So we had an interesting uh, experience recently. We had a, uh, an attorney who brought a concealed weapon on campus, not realizing that he couldn't do that. And of course that uh, caused a Twitter flurry throughout the campus. Well, we had just installed some um, safety panic devices in some of the larger classrooms where if there's a, if there's a situation like that, somebody in the room can hit the button, the emergency door locks close and, and it becomes secure. Well, apparently one of the exit devices didn't close in one of the classrooms. So, you know, the attorney was all the way over here and saw it, uh, people saw it on Twitter, they panicked. And so the classroom over here hit the panic device and well, somebody came in and rattled the door and pulled the door open and so the professor tweeted out, well, great, this panic device doesn't work. We actually turned it into the positive and um, our university communications saw the tweet, we reacted, we went back and, and um, started inspecting our stuff a little bit better. But also it gave the, the provost an opportunity to kind of counsel his, his staff and his professors to say, okay, think about what you're putting out there. Um, this is a new world, we need to watch what we say. So it's kind of, turned it, an interesting thing into a, into a positive there. It's a, it's a new day. You, you said here this morning, I listened to the president calling the facilities folks to come to the table and help make it, help make it a better process. That, that's huge for this group, huge. Great. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much. Safe travels.